So <clears throat> this is our third lap for this course IE5320 modeling and analysis of manufacturing systems and and if you check the slides already you'll see that there's no much difference between what we did last time and and today's lab um, the reason for that is our focus today is going to be on how to use the resource blocks the cease delay release blocks in a different way uh, meaning that we're going to have multiple resources interacting and you will see that the original sequence of cease delay release would not apply always. It's going to depend on what type of interaction you're having with your resources and that's going to be the, the focus today. We're going to have uh, some machines and also we're going to have some operators for those machines and the operator is going to be interacting with the machines and we're going to use the cease delay release blocks in a different order in order to model that interaction. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on, on the slides today, um, but again if you have any questions remember these are the definitions that we continue using for, for the purpose of the lab and also for the purpose of the simulation um, concepts that we use uh, in our lab. Always remember uh, to to save your work. Okay, so this is what I was mentioning. We're going to focus on the resources element today and how to use the sequence of Z's delay release blocks in a different way so we can uh, model the interaction of the operators with the machines. Uh, any questions about how to use the assign block? This is the block that we started using last time to assign some of the attributes to the entities that are arriving to your system. Um, on the previous lab, we used it to assign the arrival time that allows us to, um, to collect the information about the cycle time. Okay, so we also started using the branch block and as if you notice I posted a, another video for last lab because I needed to show you how what was the problem with uh, with the results specifically for the utilization of one of the machines and the problem was that I was putting the the else branch before the condition and what that does is it will send all the parts through that branch and would never go to the condition. Okay, so if you're going to use an else branch, you need to make sure that that else branch is always towards the end of the sequence of the branches. Okay. So one thing that I need to discuss today is uh, we talk about statistics, how to collect the, the average using the output summary report. We also talk about how to use the sets elements to uh, split the information about different different type of entities that we have in the system. Um, but I put this one as a new uh, block because today we're going to use a different statistic in our in our example and also in our lab. I want to collect the average numbers average number of parts in the queue. Okay, so we talk about that in class um, on Tuesday. So also I want to be able to collect that in our, in our simulation. So that's going to be also a time dependent statistic and for that I need to define a, a dstat using this nq um, variable that is defined by arena and inside the brackets what you're going to have is the name of the queue. Okay, so that's going to give you the output well, the, the statistic in terms of the average number of parts or entities in your queue. And we are going to apply that to our lab today. You already know how to get this output report. So for the statistics that you define in your system, you need to define the outputs. 
so you can get the average of across all replications in your system. So if you are modeling our system for 10 days and each day is represented by a replication, <clears throat> then the results for the fifth day is going to be the results of the fifth replication. But if I want to know what is the average across all the days, then you need to find the average across all the replications. And that's what the output element does. It will look at the result for each one of the replications and it will give you the average and the confidence intervals and the maximum and the minimum for uh, all your replications. And it will look something like this. Okay, so the average, the half width, the minimum and the maximum across 10 replications. Okay, so now we can focus on the example for today. And this example is similar to the problem we discussed on our previous lab, with the only difference that we only have a, a one type of part, as you can see, only uh, one type of part. And we have the interval times that are modeled using an exponential distribution with the uh, 4.4 minutes. We also have two machines, and these machines are identical, meaning that they will have the same processing time. Okay, so as you can see, I'm only giving you the, the processing time for only one processing time, which means that both of them have the same, same processing time. And after the processing is completed, then we have the output. However, there's another difference in this problem. There's a single operator who must set up each part on the machines and remove each part from the machines. Okay, so before you get, you get to process them, there's going to be a operator that is going to set up that part in this machine. Then the processing is going to start. After the part is completed, we're gonna call the operator one more time. That operator is going to take the part and it's gonna put it into the, uh, this part of the process or the next station. Okay, so you have two machines and on an operator that is going to be dealing with both of them. So the idea here is that once the part, once the machine is over with one of the parts, you have to call the operator to make the machine available, that operator is going to move that part to this station, but at the same time, the, the, the machine is going to become available, so the operator has to go and pick another part and put it into the machine. Okay, and it will do that for both of the, of the machines. So that's the ma major difference between the, the model that we saw previously and today's model. There's some interaction with the with the operator and the machine, and we need to know how to model that interaction. Uh, both setup and uh, removal times are distributed according to a uniform distribution, and the setup time is given by a 2, 4, um, 1, 2 for the removal. So both of them using a, a uniform distribution. And the, the, the statistics that we want to compute is how many parts are processed in eight hours, what is the average number of parts in the queue, and what is the average utilization of the machines. Okay, so any questions about what we need to do for this one? Okay, so for those of you who just came in, um, I was discussing that the slides that we showed today are very similar to the ones I posted for last week. The only major difference is that for, for the stat element, I'm adding a new statistic that will allow us to compute the average number of parts in a queue, which is one of the concepts that we discussed on Tuesday. Okay, so we know how to co compute that um, using the equations from factory physics. Now I want you to be able to compute that using the, the software. So we're going to use that NQ variable <coughs> to get the, the amount, that amount, or the average number of parts in the queue. Okay, so now we can move to 
to work on this uh, example. So if you can log in into your machines and open Arena. As always, we, the first thing that we're going to define is our um, experimental frame. So I'm going to start by defining all the elements for my simulation model. have one queue right the queue that goes in front of the machine so let me start by defining the the queues maybe I can increase the size a little bit And since we only have one queue, I'm just going to call it queue. How many resources are we going to have in this um, example? Yes, there are three, two machines and one operator. Okay. But in this particular example, there's one thing that you, you can notice um, and that will make your, e your representation of the model easier. If you have a machine that has the same processing time, that means that the machines are identical. Okay, so you're going to have the same processing time. They're going to take the same time to process the, the parts. So for those cases, you don't have to define multiple sequences for each one of the machines. You can represent only one sequence and then change the capacity of the machines, which is what we're going to do today. Uh, but I'm going to show you that in a second. But before, let's, let's just define the resources element. And we're going to have, I'm just going to use one name for the machines. So I'm going to call these machines. And since the machines are identical, I will let the model know, oh, you know, we have two machines that are the same. So what you need to do is to change this capacity to two. If you put three, that means that you have three machines. You have four, you put four there. Okay, so far we've been using only one and we've been defining different machines for each one of, our, of the models, but the reason for that is we have different processing time for those machines. Today we have the same, we can just change the capacity to two. And then we also have an operator. So let's name this operator. And for that one, we only have one, so it's the same um, capacity, capacity one. So your resource element um, modules look like this. Machines, capacity two, operator, capacity one. Okay. So we have the queues, the resources, and I think that's all we need to build our model. 
Okay, we're gonna need to collect some statistics, but I'm going to go back after I build the model. Okay, so actually we can start looking at which ones do we need. Um, so how many parts are processed in eight hours? For that, you're gonna need a counter, so we can define a counter. Um, what is the average number of parts in the queue? For that, I already mentioned that we needed uh, this stat. And then, what is the average utilization of the machines? For that, we also need a, a this stat statistic. So I think we can define those. Um, so let's put the counter here. And I'm gonna call it a number of parts. And uh, these stats. I'm going to define two, one for the machine's uh, utilization. So that's going to be NR machines. Can you see what, what I'm writing there? Or do you need me to turn off some of the lights to see better? Can you see fine? Okay. So that's for the machines. And then we need uh, the average number of parts in the queue. And as I mentioned for that, we need a, a, a variable that is defined by the software. That's the, that's the end queue. And we can type the name of the queue, which is Q in this case. Okay, so for this particular um, model or example, yes sir? Oh, yes, that's correct. Thank you. So yes, we need to type a name here for, for both of them. Uh, this is going to be machine I'm gonna type AVG average machine utilization thank you yeah and for NQ we have to do the same thing so we need to type a name here average number in Q. Okay, so always when you define a this that you have to provide a name. Because when we go and define the outputs element, then we need to refer back to that name. But you know for this specific case, I didn't I didn't specify that we needed multiple days. I just want to run this for eight hours. But I'm gonna show you anyway how to run this for multiple replications so we can get the output report. 
Okay, so for for that specific portion of the model, we need to define the output element. And since I don't want to type the whole thing, especially since I give them a very long name, I can just copy this and then use it here. So this is going to be a D A B G. For this. And I'm going to repeat the same process for for the queue. So let me go copy this thing. AVG average number in Q and I want to do the same thing for I want to get the report also for the counter so I'm going to add the NC function for the counter and the name for my counter is number of parts So this is a definition for the three statistics that I want to get in the output report. We have uh, two DAVGs, two time dependent statistics, and we have a counter statistic. Any questions? Okay, so we have the experimental frame ready. Now we can start building our model. So the first thing we're gonna need is a create block. And we know that the interarrivals are going to uh, going to be modeled using a, an exponential distribution. So I can come here and look at the random distributions for the exponential, and I can put a mean of 4.4. Okay, so expo 4.4. After that parts will go to the queue. So I'm going to define that queue. And we know the name of the queue it has an unlimited capacity so I don't have to change the capacity of the queue. But if the if the if we had if you have a limited buffer, limited space, and you want to know to change the capacity to the number of units that you can have in that buffer, then you change the capacity here. And we did that for one of the labs already. Okay. So now we're going to start looking at the logic behind the behind using the operator to set up and to release the parts from the machines. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is to think about the process. Okay, so the first thing that needs to happen once you start seeing those parts in the, in the queue is that you need to call the operator to set up the machine. 
but the operator cannot set up the machine if the machine is not available. So what happens is you need to call both of the resources at the same time. Okay, so you need to seize both of them. And you need to make sure that at least one machine is available and that the operator is available so you can perform that action. Okay, so that's why we're gonna start putting a seize block here, but that seize is going to be calling both of the resources because I want to make sure that both of them are available at the time that I set up the machine. Okay, so I'm going to add here to this is block, I need the machines, okay, and I also need the operator. Okay, so I'm going to seize both of them. <clears throat> so I know both of them are available at the time of setup. Okay, now since I have both of them resources, the first thing that needs to happen is the, um, the setup. And we have a time to represent that setup. Setup time is uniform to four. So the next thing that's going to happen is that delay for, or we're going to represent that delay for the setup. And that delay is going to be connected to the C's block. And it's again, a uniform two, four. So it's going to take between two and four minutes for me to set up this machine. Any questions? Okay. So once I do the setup, what is the next thing that needs to happen? Yes, you need to release the operator. You don't release the machine, you release the operator because the operator can go and do something else once you're processing that part. Okay, so at this point, I'm releasing the operator, but not the machine. So, operator, what's going to happen next? The processing, correct. So now I need to model the delay of the part in the machine. Okay, so I need another delay. And this one is going to follow this triangular. So let me copy this. So first I check that the, both of them are available. I do the setup, I release the operator, the operator can go do a release of the other machine, we can go set up the other machine while I'm processing this part. And that is what we are representing here so far. Okay, so after that, what needs to happen? The, the part is completed. Now I need to call the operator again to do the release of the machine or to do or to take the part out of the machine. So I'm going to call that operator again. So I'm going to need another cease block. And that cease block is for the operator. Cease. Now I know how, how long it's going to take for me to do the removal. 
is a uniform one two. <clears throat> I'm gonna copy this. <clears throat> so that's the delay for the removal. So I need another delay here. need another release block so I'm going to release the machine and the operator And that's the, the logic. Okay, so you go call the, the machine and the operator together. You do the setup, you release the operator, but the machine is processing. Once the machine completes the processing time, you call the operator again to do the removal, and after you're done with the removal, both of them become available again. Okay? So that is what we are representing here. And as you can see, in order to get to that um, model representation, we need to use the same blocks, but in a different uh, sequence. You still get the CZ delay release sequence, but you have another sequence be in, in between representing the other resource. Okay, so after this, what we need to do is just to collect the statistics and the only thing that we are interested in collecting at this point other than the uh, utilization of the machines and the Q average or the average Q on number of parts in Q is the number of parts process so for that we need a counter or a count block so that's going to go after that we have the number of parts, which is the name of my, our counter in this case. And after that, we can release or dispose our entities. And after you're done putting that dispose block, please check that your model has no errors. Okay, so you see this, this error that I'm having is because I'm using Q as the name of the Q and I cannot use that name because it's a reserved name for the software. So I need to go change the name that I was using if you use the same name, you need to do the same. You need to change the, the name of your queue. So you have to do that here in the queues element. Mine just put queue one. And then go here and change that into the block. And now I should be able to distance, yes. Everywhere where the queue is mentioned, you have to go change this. And let me save this to do this for yeah. 
and now I can go check if the model has any errors. So far, no errors. Do you have any errors in yours? Before we move to setting up the, the experiment. Okay, so I want to run this for how many hours? Eight hours. So I'm going to go to setup. I'm going to uncheck all these things because I'm going to be generating only the statistics that I need and then apply you can name your project differently uh, in terms of the reports I want the last report the Simon summary report and then I want to go to the replication parameters tap and let me run this for 10 days and I want to run this for 8 hours and I want my base time units to be minutes okay so make sure that you uncheck the, the statistics that are provided by Marina then make sure that you select the right report the Simon output report and then finally go to the replication parameters choose to run this for 10 replications and replication length of 8 hours and your base time units are minutes and then click OK and let's try to run this okay so we have the average number of parts in queue the number of parts process this is for the first replication let's go to, towards the end here okay any comments about this number that is saying that the average utilization of the machines is 1.92 you know one in this case represents a hundred percent okay and we are saying that we are using these machines uh, 1.92%, more than 100%. There's something wrong here, okay? And the reason that is because we have two machines, okay? So in order for us to get the utilization for per machine, we need to divide our this tab by two. In this case, because we have two machines, if you have three machines, you have to do three. So I'm going to go back to the distance element. And I'm going to say this expression divided by two. then click OK now you will see that that utilization will go under 1 and for each one of the machines the average utilization is about 96% you are seeing an average of 7.39 parts in Q and we are processing 98, about 98 parts per 8 hours. <clears throat> and that's all we need. Any questions? Okay, so I'm going to stop the lecture video here.